Great. So the next talk will be Hihara, sorry if I misspell your name, is from the University of uh, Oviedo and... Uh... Is it working now? Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk in this presentation about some thoughts about cited uh, an actualistic carbon recovery for Italian phases models based on our observations on lower Cretaceous deposits from northern Spain. Carbon and evaporite peritidal deposits have been an uh, object of intensive research efforts because they are widespread in the geological record and they are valuable photographic indicators. For this reason, they have been used very commonly for developing cyclicity analysis. In order to interpret the ancient peritidal succession, we commonly use phases models and ideal cycles based on present day environments. The three most commonly used uh, phases models are based on tidal floods from Bahamas, which are characterized by humid climates and nearly normal marine salinities in subtidal areas. Another analog uh, is from tidal floods from Shark Bay, which are characterized by semi-arid climates and sand and subtidal areas. And finally, the tidal floods from the Arabian Gulf, which, has, which, which have an arid climate and sand and subtidal areas. Although these phases models are very useful, peritidal settings are much more complex than reflected in these models, and their applicability to the ancient successions may be limited. So I will show you some low, lower Cretaceous peritidal deposits from northern Spain, and uh, in order to evaluate the applicability of the phases models and their suitability for developing cyclicity analysis. The study deposits form part of the sedimentary infill of the Camelos Basin, which is located in northern Spain. And it was an extensional basin developed from lower, uh, from upper Jurassic to lower Cretaceous, in relationship with the opening of western Tethys and North, North Atlantic Oceans. More specifically, the Ankara group, uh, in which the deposits uh, studied are uh, present, is very in age and it is composed of silicyclastic and carbonate evaporate deposits. These deposits were formed in shallow coastal and tidal intensified environments, and during the position of the Ocala group, accommodation space was strongly controlled by tectonics. The silicyclastic deposits of this unit were formed in broad, low gradient fluvial tidal floods that were inhabited by abundant dinosaurs and other vertebrates. And laterally, they were related with carbon and evaporite deposits with a laminated appearance deposited in shallow coastal salinas. The study deposits are located in this area of the basin, which was characterized by low subsidence rates, rates compared to other areas of the basin. In this part of the basin, uh, the predominant deposits are laminated carbonates and evaporites, but in the middle upper part of the unit, they occur uh, interbedded with stromatolites, intraclass pretzels, and pseudomorphs after anhydrous nodules. What we did in this area of the basin, we studied two laterally equivalent deeper stratigraphic sections in order to analyze the lateral and vertical phases relationships. In this outcrops, we identified five different sedimentary phases. Stromatolites and stromatolite pretzels were predominant in the lower and middle part of the section. And thinly bedded to laminated dolostems occurred all along the section, but they are the predominant phases in the upper part. All these, uh, sorry, all these carbon phases are disrupted by calcite and coarse pseudomorphs after, after a high rate nodules. I will show you in more detail these phases, starting with the stromatolites. In the lower and middle part of the sections, they are characterized by domed biostroms, which are laterally continuous. And in the upper part of the sections, they occur as subspherical or domed biograms, which are lateral, uh, limited lateral density. These uh, stromatolites are composed of alternating agglutinated textures, like these, which are typical and tidal settings, and dense dolomitic textures. And also, we have recognized pseudomorphs after fusion crystals in these stromatolites, which indicate that the stromatolites were developed in high salinity areas. 
Stromatoids are associated with bread sas composed of fragments of the stromatoid lamina, indicating that the stromatoids were desiccated and subsequently worked by waves, storms, or tidal currents. Interestingly, some of the bread sas show dolomitic menisci within the interparticle space. This feature is typical of the battle zone, so this indicates that at least part of the stromatoid bread sas were deposited in the upper intertidal or supertidal zones. The thinly better to laminate the dolus stones occur all along the sections, but they are predom the predominant phases in the uppermost part, and they consist of laterally continuous layers, usually with flat bed and uh, flat base and top, but sometimes they show a convex top, or they may even smoothly break the stromatoid fiber. These, uh, these kind of phases are typical of tidal flat deposits, and the fact that we see these convex arc morphologies suggested that they were related with the development of flat microbial mass. When we look into the, in detail into these phases, we recognize that they are formed by an alternation of mass form and peletal lamina, which may form wavy, lenticular, and, and flexor stability. Um, these phases may present pseudomos after lenticular dipsum, indicating as well cell and uh, environments, and some of them show desiccation matrix. So some of these deposits were severely exposed. In the upper part of the sections, uh, some flat pebble and natural spreads are present, and they are composed of fragments of the thinly bedded to laminated dots indicating the desiccations of these laminated deposits and reworking aspects. And uh, these flat pebble and edge wall spreads act as nuclei for stromatolite BORs. All the carbon phases are disrupted by these kind of nodules that we, could, uh, we were able to recognize and to interpret them as anhydrid uh, nodules because of their orthorhombic R as an acicular uh, morphologies. This is very important because anhydrous nodules only precipitate in the capillary zone. So the deposit that contains this kind of nodules must have been the, uh, entered in the supertidal zone. Moreover, some of the anhydrous nodule layers and the uh, carbon deposits that contain them are truncated by sharp, flat, corrosive surfaces that we interpret them as, deflation, uh, as the result of deflation of the sediment that was raised out of the capillary zone by the mineral sediment growth of the We interpret that all these phases were deposited in carbon of evaporite tidal flats characterized by hypersaline water conditions and by the extensive growth of different kinds of microbial mass. This is very similar to what we see in the tidal flats of Shark Bay. Actually, the strong similarities between these two settings make the deposits of the Uncalapur one of the best fossil analogs of this present-day example. The comparison of these two settings allows us to recognize some important features. In sharp plate tidal flats, the morphologies of the microbial deposits depend on the agitation conditions in the different areas of the tidal flats as well as on the topographic gradient. By analogy with this uh, present-day analog, uh, we interpret that the intervals dominated by stromatoids and stromatoid bridges were developed in more agitated areas, probably with steeper topographic gradients, whereas the intervals dominated by thin laminated dotted stones were developed in less agitated flat, <coughs> flatter areas. Although the Sharp Bay phases model was very useful for interpreting this ancient analog. Uh, sharp Bay tidal flats do not present anhydrous nodules. This is something uh, typical from the tidal flats from the Arab Arabian world. In this case, the anhydrous nodules precipitate in tidal flats characterized by an arid climate. But in the case of the Ancalabo, we interpret that the climate was less arid because we know that close to this area there were areas with large fresh water input and inhabited by abandoned dinosaurs and other vertebrates. 
once we interpreted the sedimentary processes and uh, the sedimentary environment of these uh, deposits, we try to divide the, sex the two sections into different cycles. But this was very difficult because it was a, there was a high uncertainty um, considering which, were, which phases was the biggest one and which were the shallower phases. Actually, we tried several possibilities and we tried to divide the sections using different criteria, but we obtained very different num a number of cycles in one section or in the other. We can see this just in a small uh, scale example. If we take a look to this picture, in this side of the picture, we would see just one stomata. Whereas laterally, we would recognize several cycles. Let's say, if we start with stromatolites, we would see stromatolites above many stromatolite pressures, again stromatolite, stromatolite pressures, so several cycles in this area. Whereas in the other part, we just see one, one single stromatolite. Uh, we, another approach that we made was trying to use some sedimentary, uh, some erosive surfaces to correlate both sections. For example, some erosive surfaces within the laminated uh, faces or at the top of the stromatolites. But this was not possible because they have a very limited lateral extent. Even using the high nodal layers is very uh, controversial because they have also a uh, limited lateral extent and also because unless we found these uh, deflation surfaces truncating them, it's very difficult to know if the different nodules were formed at the same time or at different times. So, we learned that this uh, patchy phases distribution and the random stacking pattern of the Incala group is due to an arrangement of the phases in a mosaic way, instead of a phases beds arranged according to depth. So this kind of peritidal setting uh, deposits are unsuitable for cyclicity analysis. This was the case in the Oncaragon, but probably this happens also in other peritidal ancient successions. So uh, this was a brief summary of uh, our publication from two 20, uh, 2020, so we could, if you are interested in this, you can find more information in that area. Yes, but if we interact and there is an alternation between the CC cost and the capital, and in which way uh, the CC cost fraction influence, if any, the capital, the development of the capital one. Okay. Thank you. Actually, in this In the study area, there are some things in class of deposits. Yeah, I uh, have to go back to the link. Uh, okay, it's in here. For example, in this, uh, this is the whole section uh, measured in this area, and in this area, we found some things in class of inputs. But they are just things in class of masters, and they do not change the environment. You can find the same, exactly the same carbonate and evaporite deposits below and above the silicic plastic interval. They do not change the environment at all. It's just some silicic plastics coming from these tidal flats and they arrive to this area. The, then the carbonate uh, and the carbonate precipitation stops, but after the silicic plastic input, the carbonate and the carbonate deposition resumes without any change. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, go for Thank you for a nice talk. Um, do you see any evidence of aeolian deflation during low stands, the way it's been described from Qatar very recently? Okay. What, what we interpret as uh, aeolian deflation is the erosion surfaces that truncate the uh, anhydrous nodules. By analogy with the present-day model from uh, Arabian Gulf, we know that the growth of the hydrogen nodules raises the sediment and uh, raises it above the capillary zone. So as that sediment raised is uh, dry because it's above the capillary zone, the uh, wind erodes it. 
but that's the only features that we have been able to recognize and, and be confident that it could be aeolian versus surfaces. The other surfaces probably they, they look like more uh, sub sub uh, sub because they have uh, channelized shapes in some cases. So that's the only aeolian features that we are confident. Thank you.